I thank all of the Kennedys for your words, for your support, and the service that you've rendered to this country. I stand here, I stand here today with a great deal of humility. I know what your support means. I know the cherished place the Kennedy family holds in the hearts of the American people. And that is as it should be, because the Kennedy family, more than any other, has always stood for what's best about the Democratic Party and what is best about America. They've stood by the idea that each of us can make a difference and that all of us ought to try. That no frontier is beyond our reach when we are united and not divided. And that those of us who are not content to settle for the world as it is can remake the world as it should be. That together we can seek a newer world. No one embodies this proud legacy more than the people we've just heard from. For a woman who was introduced to America in the spotlight, Caroline Kennedy has worked out in public view to bring about changes in communities all across the country. Whether it's her work with the New York City's public schools, or the Profile and Courage Award, or through books on politics, civil rights, and history, Caroline has been a quiet force for change in this country, and it is an extraordinary honor to have her support. It is an honor as well to have Congressman Kennedy's support. He has been a champion in the fight to make sure that every American has equal access to the quality mental health care that they need. It is one of the great civil rights issues of our time, and it is an issue I'm proud to have worked with him on. He's not just part of the next generation of Kennedy leaders, he is part of the next generation of Democratic and American leaders, and I look forward to fighting by his side in the months and years to come. Of course, it is a special honor and privilege to have the support of the Congressman's father, Caroline's uncle, Senator Edward Kennedy. In, in the year I was born, <laughs> hold on a second. In the year I was born, President Kennedy let out word that the torch had been passed to a new generation of Americans. He was right, it had. It was passed to his youngest brother. From the battles of the 1960s to the battles of today, he has carried that torch, lighting the way for all who share his American ideals. It's a torch that he's carried as a champion for working Americans, a fierce proponent of universal health care, a tireless advocate for giving every child in this country a quality education. It's a torch he's carried as the Lion of the Senate, a man whose mastery of the issues and command of the levers of government, whose determined leadership and deaf political skills are matched only by his legendary ability to tell a good story. <laughs> Ted Kennedy stands apart from the prevailing wisdom in Washington that has reduced politics to a game of tactics and transactions in which no principle is beyond sacrifice. And his public life is a testimony to what can be achieved when you focus on lifting the country up rather than tearing political opponents down. I, 
I think it, it may be hard for university students to fully grasp the achievements of this man because so much of his work uh, was done before many of you were born and so much of it has done, been done since but few public servants in our nation's history have had such a profound influence on the course of our nation. Few leaders in this country have more experience in how to bring about real change and few have better judgment about where we're headed as a party and as a people. So today, so to have this man stand beside me today is more than just politics for me. It is personal. I was too young to remember John Kennedy, and I was just a child when Robert Kennedy ran for president. But in the stories I heard growing up, I saw how my grandparents and mother spoke about them and about that period of our nation's life as a time of great hope and achievement. They inspired my family as they inspired families all across the country. And I think my own sense of what is possible in this country, part of the reason I stand here today, comes in part from what they said America was like in the days of John and Robert Kennedy. I believe that's true for millions of Americans. I've seen it in the offices in this city where portraits of John and Robert hang on office walls or collections of their speeches sit on bookshelves. I've seen it in my travels all across this country because no matter where I go or who I talk to, one thing I can say for certain is that the dream has never died. The dream has never died. The dream has never died. It lives on. It lives on in the older folks I meet who remember what America once was and know what America can be once again. It lives on in the young people who are, who've only seen John or Robert on television but are ready to answer their call. It lives on in those Americans who refuse to be deterred by the scale of the challenges we face, who know, as President Kennedy said at this university, that no problem of human destiny is beyond human beings. And it lives on in those Americans, young and old, rich and poor, black and white, Latino, and Asian and Native American, gay and straight, who are tired of a politics that divides us and want to recapture the sense of common purpose that we had when John Kennedy was President of the United States of America. That is the dream we hold in our hearts. That is the kind of leadership we long for in this country. And that is the kind of leadership I intend to offer as President of the United States of America. So make no mistake, the choice in this election is not between regions or religions or genders. It is not about rich versus poor, young versus old, and it is certainly not about black versus white. It is about, it is about the past versus the future. It is about looking backwards or marching forwards. It's about whether we are going to seize this moment to write the next great American story. So someday we can tell our children that this was the time when we healed our nation. This was the time when we repaired our world. And this was the time 
when we renewed the America, that this was the time when we renewed the America that has led generations of weary travelers from all over the world to find opportunity and liberty and hope on our doorstep. One of these travelers was my father. I barely knew him. But when, after his death, I finally took my first trip to his tiny village in Kenya and asked my grandmother, and I asked my grandmother, who lives there, in a small shack without running water or electricity, I asked her if there was anything left from him. And she opened a trunk and took out a stack of letters, which she handed to me. There were many more than 30 of them, all handwritten by my father, all addressed to colleges and universities across America, all filled with the hope of a young man who had been born into poverty, but who dreamed of more for his life. And his prayer was answered when he was brought over to study in this country. That's how he ended up meeting my mother. What I learned much later is that part of what made it possible for him to come here was an effort by the young senator from Massachusetts at the time, John F. Kennedy, and by a grant, and by a grant from the Kennedy Foundation to help Kenyan students pay for travel. So it is partly because of their generosity that my father came to this country. And because he did, I stand before you today, inspired by America's past, filled with hope for America's future, and determined to do my part in writing our next great chapter. So, that is the essence of America each generation reaching back and bringing along those who might have otherwise been left behind. So I'm asking for your hands. I'm asking for your help. And I'm asking for your hearts. And if you will stand with me in the days to come, if you will stand for change so that our children have the same chance that somebody gave us, if you'll stand to keep the American dream alive for those who still hunger for opportunity and still thirst for justice. If you are ready to stop settling for what the cynics tell you you must accept and finally reach for what you know is possible, then we will not just win these primaries. We will not just win this general election. We will change the course of history and light a new torch for change in this country. And the glow from that fire can truly light the world. Thank you, everybody. God bless you.